Hi guys, in this video I want to show you how to use multiple dynamic layers in Hive. So we're talking about multiple velocity samples that can be either triggered using different velocities or that can be smoothly cross-faded. So in Hive we go to the little plus icon here to add a sampler to our master chain. I'm going to open the table view and the sampler settings because I want to use them in this video. And I'm going to open this folder here where I have some flute samples. Now I'm only using a single note, note 60, and that's the 60 that you can see in the file name here. And the only reason I'm using a single note is just to simplify this video, but obviously for your project you use as many notes as you have sampled on the instrument. So we've got three dynamic layers, DIN 1, DIN 2, and DIN 3, and one round robin, that's what the RR1 is here. So to start with we're just going to do the basic velocity mapped uh, dynamics where depending on how hard you hit the key uh, it'll trigger a different sample. So we'll just drag these across and close that window now and I'm going to the file name token parser and we've got the note number here 60 so I'm going to select that to single key and I'm going to set that to note number and then for the dynamics, I'm going to set this just to velocity value. And obviously that's not a good velocity value, DIN 1, so it's going to stick them all on velocity 0 and 1. But we'll sort that in a moment. So I'll just hit OK, and I don't know if you can see that, but if I zoom in, all the samples are here. And this is why I've got the table view open, because I can actually see all the samples, even though they're all mapped to the same velocity 0 and 1. So we're going to take the third velocity layer, this is the loudest, and we're going to set the maximum of that to 127, and the minimum to 80. Take the next velocity layer, dynamic 2, and we'll set that to 79 and 40, and the last one we will set to 39, just so it butts up against the uh, second one. And if I play these now, You can see it triggers each uh, velocity layer, each sample for each layer as I hit that velocity. We can see that in the sample editor as well if I select the lowest one, and then the middle one, and then the loudest. Okay, I'm going to close that table view now. Now, as well as just going through the different dynamic layers, you might also want to put some uh, volume modulation on there so when you hit a low dynamic it not only plays the lower sample but it also plays it at a low velocity because currently no matter where you hit the yes uh, the no matter which velocity you hit as long as it's within the range of say this sample it's going to play that sample at the same volume and the same for this one and usually you'd want some gradation of volume there. So if you play really soft, it's going to play the softest sample, but it's going to play even softer than if you hit it at the top of its range. So to do that, we go to Gain up here, and this opens up the Gain modulators for this sampler that we're in. And this is the default envelope. I'll add a bit more release to that, actually. And then we go to the Plus, and we're going to go to Voice Start, and we're going to select Velocity Modulator. And... We can put a table here if you want to add different curves and different shapes to it. And if you want to add a curve to this, you can hold Control. And that's probably command on a Mac, but on a PC it's Control. And hover your mouse cursor over this node here. Just hover it over, don't click on it. And move your scroll wheel, and that will change the curve. And you can do that for any node you add. So if you want to get a nice S-shaped sort of curve, you can uh, play around with that. But for now we'll just leave it at the default linear curve and as I play the note you'll see the velocity level that I'm playing at in here and you'll also hear the volume change. So I'm playing really soft so you won't hear very much if anything. So that's a simple way of um, mapping your dynamics. Uh, one other thing we can do is we can actually add some crossfades between these layers because currently if the the one velocity level between 
uh, velocity layer one and velocity layer two it just goes straight between those two samples and it might be a bit jarring it would be nice if there was some crossover between these two so let's say uh, uh, we'll bump this one up to velocity 45 and we'll take this one down to velocity 35 and now we've got a area here where the two samples are going to play at the same time so that's a kind of uh, a transition there and we'll do the same with these two so we'll bring that one down to 75 and we'll bump that one up to 85. Now the only problem with this is we're going to hear both samples at the same time and it's not going to sound great. I'm just going to disable this velocity modulator so we can hear it more clearly and hopefully I can hit that um, sample velocity zone. Let's just try that. There we go. So now we're hearing two samples at once whereas really what we want to hear is both samples but we don't want to hear their volume boost by having them overlapped. We want to um, we want them to dip in volume when they overlap so that we get a nice crossfade. So to do that we just select the samples and you can do this for as many samples as you've got loaded in highs and we click this button here and it turns those into nice smooth crossfades. And we can combine that with a velocity modulator as well which I'll just reactivate. So that's a, a really good way to add your uh, dynamic layers, but generally you're only going to want to do this with things like staccatos, uh, pizzicatos, and uh, percussion samples, short samples basically, plucked sounds and things like that. Because for sustaining instruments like flutes and violins, when you've got a long sustain note, you want to be able to go through the different dynamic layers smoothly like a musician can, so that you can go from a, a really low dynamic up to a high dynamic without having to re-trigger the node. So that's what we're going to look at now. So I'm going to delete this velocity modulator. I'm going to close up the gain uh, settings there. I'm going to delete all these samples. We don't need them now. And um, we're going to re-import them in just a moment. So let's open our samples folder again. We're going to take all of them across. Same procedure as before. Except this time we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to set the note number to single key as we did before and so that's number. But instead of setting these uh, dynamics to velocity, we're going to set these to RR group. Now this is actually for round robins, which is why it's called RRs, but there's also a built-in thing in highs so that you can change the purpose of these groups and use them for um, dynamic crossfades. So it detects automatically that we want the values 1, 2 and 3 from the file name because it's clever and I'm going to click OK. Now it's saying the amount of RR groups has changed because there was only one and now we've uh, told it we want three so it says are you sure about that? Click OK and now if we go down here we've got three groups and it's one sample per group and it's mapped it to the full dynamic range uh, the full velocity range for us automatically. So now I'm going to go to my sampler settings and we've got three round robin groups but we're going to use them for dynamics and to do that we click here where it says disabled and select set that to enabled and this is for group crossfade so this is built into highs it's designed so that you can easily add uh, crossfadeable dynamics and you can have up to eight layers and you'll notice that when I enable this this window pops up here with a, a, a table that we can edit. So this is for each of our dynamic layers. We can change the dynamic um, uh, curve. So we've got one for layer for group one, two, and three in our case. We don't need to worry about the others because we don't have that many groups. So we're going to go to group one, and the range of this is 511. If I put my mouse there, you can see it says 511. So we want um, group one to fade out halfway through the full range uh, so that's 511 divided by 2 which is about 255 so put that at around 255 it doesn't have to be exact and then for group two we want the same thing but we want it to be at the max at the center point and for group three we want it to be at the minimum at the center point and rise up to the full volume so here we've got our 
curve. So as you move your mod wheel or whatever di um, uh, controller you set up, it's going to go from uh, it's going to sweep across this curve, and we're going to see that in detail in a moment. Now you can hold your control key and move your mouse again if you want to make these into some nice equal power curves or again you can do s-shaped curves or whatever you like to try and um, get a smoother crossfade I'm just gonna stick with the linear for this video but we might get a bit of chorusing but that doesn't matter and then what we need to do instead of going to gain modulators we're gonna go to the group fade modulator so again this is a built-in thing in highs so just click group fade and we get this modulator area down here click the plus button, go to time variant and select MIDI controller. Now here you can set whichever MIDI CC you'd like. So I'm going to set mine to my mod wheel, CC1. Smoothing, this is to um, this is to add a bit of lag time and this will help reduce any chorusing effect. So I'm just going to bump that up to the maximum since I'm using this linear curve. And the default value you want this to be at when the instrument first loads, I'm going to set that to 64. I'm going to click this use table thing and this gives us another area where we can edit the curve to get a more um, natural dynamic uh, fade. So you can make it so as your mod wheel uh, is at the center position, which is where that line is there, you can see that line. The dynamic is still really low, even though we're at the center position and it takes a while until it ramps up to the max. So you could do that or you could invert it the other way so there's all kinds of things you can do with this. Again, I'm just going to leave it at the linear position. And you're going to hear now, I'm going to hold it down and we're going to sweep through and you should hear this curve. You hear that dynamic crossfade and that was actually much smoother than I was expecting. And up here you can see it sweeping as well. If we go to the second group now, you can see where we're at in the volume. And in the third group, let's switch back to the second for some reason. But in the third group, we're up at the uh, top here now. Now, the only downside to this, well, there's two downsides. The first downside is it's playing three voices because it has to play all three samples at the same time uh, so that when we crossfade through, it, it's just doing a volume crossfade and it doesn't have to restart the sample. So that means you're using three voices. So if you go up to where it says voices here and you have a look when I press the key, you can see it shows that there's three voices playing, which isn't very many. And our voice uh, limit is 128 in this case by default. So it's not gonna be too much of a problem. The other downside is that we can't use the round robin groups for round robins because we're using them for dynamics. So that's what I'm going to show you now is how we can um, have both crossfadable dynamics and use the round robin groups when we want them. So this is a great solution if your instrument doesn't have round robins for the sustains. Use this. It's just built in and it's really easy to use. But if you've got round robins, then this is the next thing. So I'm going to close this sampler. And I'm going to add three new ones. And we'll call the first one dynamic one. I'll just din one. Second one can be din two. Third can be din three. So we're going to have one sampler for each dynamic, and we can use the round robin feature that's built in for actually our round robins. So I have another folder here with the same samples, but I've created two round robins. So we're going to select dynamic one, round robin one and two, and drag them into the dynamic one sampler. And we'll just uh, set this up the same way. Single key, number. And then this time for the round robins, we're gonna set this to round robin group. And again, it finds the values automatically. And we're gonna ignore the dynamic thing because we're just using the dynamic, um, we're using one sampler per, dynam per dynamic. And then to save us having to do this every time now, I'm just gonna click copy settings. I'm gonna hit okay. Again, it's given us that message about the groups, hit okay on that. And then we're going to do the same for the second dynamic. Just drag them across. And this time I can just click paste settings and it puts it in automatically. Hit OK, hit OK. And then finally, oops, open them instead of dragging them. There we go. And same thing, just hit paste again. And they're in there. 
and we'll just zoom in on each of these. So now we're actually using the round robin groups. You can see it's, we've got two groups still, two groups. We're actually going to use them as round robins, and that's the default behavior of highs. If you drag them in and you map them to multiple groups and the group FX is disabled, which it is by default, it's going to do a cycle round robin. So the first time you play the key, it'll play the first sample. When you play the key again, it'll play the second sample and um, so on, depending on how many round robin samples you have. And then when it gets to the end, it's just going to loop back around to the beginning. So you get a built in cycle round robin. If you want a random round robin and a fancier thing like that, that can be done through scripting. And we'll look at that in another video. So that gives us the round robin. So we're halfway there, but we still don't have the dynamic crossfades. So currently when I press a note, it's playing all three dynamics at once at full volume. And you can see up here in the voice count, we've got three voices playing again. So that's the same as previous. So to do the crossfades, we're basically going to do the same thing we did before, but we're going to have to do it manually. So I'm going to click the body button of all of these just to bunch up the samplers. And we're going to open the gain of each one. And again, we've got the default envelope. I'm just going to minimize that for now. We don't need to look at that. And in this first one, dynamic one, I'm going to go to time variant and add a MIDI controller. Uh, CC one again, so it's running off the mod wheel, but I could set this to any CC I want. And again, turn the smoothing up. Now the only difference is we're using this table to actually do the crossfading now rather than creating a ramp um, for uh, kind of like, um, we we're kind of creating a sub ramp for the crossfade before. Now we're actually going to create the crossfade in here. So again, this is exactly the same as what we did before in the group crossfade mode. And I'm just going to copy this, right click, copy MIDI controller, and then click on here, add controller from clipboard. I'll just put that down there, lift that up there. And we'll do the same here, paste it in again. So you can see this is really quick, especially with the copy and paste feature. Okay, so that's it done. And you can see as I move the mod wheel, it moves across these slopes here, these ramps. And this is exactly what was happening with the um, group crossfade. It's just that in this version we have to use three samplers, but we get our round robin back. Now, if you want to add a separate volume curve for, say, expression, uh, there's a really easy way to do that. If we go up to our master chain, and you can do this at uh, the uh, sampler level as well, but we're going to do this for the master chain, so it affects all the samplers. Go to gain modulation time variant MIDI controller and let's say we set this to CC 11 for expression and again we can just see the ramp there and if I move my expression pedal you'll see it go up and down so now we have a volume control that is separate to the crossfading so I can turn this I'll turn the volume right down or you could link it up to the mod wheel as well. So you've got expression control, uh, volume, overall volume control by mod wheel, as well as the dynamics. And this allows you to do that curve thing again that we had before. So you're essentially affecting this curve um, based on this curve. And adding in that second volume curve for the overall um, crossfade can help smooth out any chorusing you're getting at the points where the samples overlap. Um, so that can help with the, the chorus and phasing issues. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful and uh, useful. If you've got any questions, please leave them uh, below the video on YouTube. I'll post them on the highs forum and I will do my best to answer them. And thank you for watching.